Three, two, one. So, Captain Feminist, uh, are, have you, are you, uh, we're gonna do a movie review of Captain Feminist or yep. Captain Marvel. Uh, have, have you ever been a comic book collector? I have not. No. But I did watch, uh, Batman the Animated Series. Right. Uh, when I was a kid. And that, that counts. That's about, and Spider-Man. Yeah. The, the cartoons. That was, that was it. That was you never line. collected, um, X-Men toys or anything like that? I collected Batman toys. Batman toys. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, the car, the Joker mobile, like all right. that stuff. Classic, so. uh, Penguin, right? Like from the movies. Yes. Um, yes. The, the first two movies, which were great with, uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good Batman. The George Clooney, not so, not, not so, so good. <laughs> Who was the other one? Val Kilmer. So not so great either. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. At some point, they gave him bat nipples. That's when you knew it was over. And then they had glow in the dark bad guys in the streets. It's like, how is this realistic? I've never seen like thugs or neon paint and coming at you with, you know, glowy light fingers. Yeah. Um, so I try to watch a bootleg version. Uh, I sent you a link, but you already watched it. Right. Uh, and while watching the bootleg version, yeah, I was thinking I can't do this justice and say, yeah, I sucked. You know, the bat, it was bad lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would never admit to watching a bootleg version, you know. I would never, no. <laughs> Usually I have to wait like a week or two, and then, you know, and then they remove like the guy walking across the screen, mm. sitting down, and then you can actually hear the sounds, and it's not like a distant echo. Wow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I watched it today, and it was a packed crowd. Uh, there was uh, some clapping in the end, I think. I think for the cat. I think that was, I think if anyone's yeah. going to win an award, it would be Goose the cat. And it was, there was such good chemistry between him. Yeah. Uh, and Nick Fury. And Nick Fury. <laughs> Nick, what was his middle name? Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. Edward Fury. Oh. I don't know. Um, there were, there were some funny moments. Uh, yes. You know, there were some scenes where, uh, like in the end where she's about to fight off Jude Law and Jude Law's like, well, you know, this is the day, you know, come at me, bro. Yeah. And then she pulls, uh, a Harrison Ford move, Indiana Jones move, and she just kind of shoots him, right? <sighs> yeah. So not original, right? But, um, and I was just thinking that's not really specifically an Indiana Jones thing because Harrison Ford does that also in Star Wars, shoots first. Right. Until it was retconned, right? Because they did the remake of the Star Wars movie where, uh, uh, the bounty hunter, I forgot his name, suits first. Uh, Boba Fett? No, it was, it, this takes place at the, um, Bosque. Akina, uh, Akina, um, at like at a bar. Uh, and he's being confronted with a lizard bounty hunter. And the lizard bunter is like, look, there's a price on your head from Jabba the Hutt. Uh, you let go of some spice trade and he's got a gun on him. Bosque. Bosque. That was his name? Yeah, Bosque. Bosque. Okay. Right, he's like he looks like a lizard. He's got yeah, but he's got the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so you know your Star Wars. I'm just playing a lot of Battlefront too <laughs> lately. I'm a beat boss. <laughs> I've got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's there's him shooting first. So it seems like more of an Indiana Jones thing. Uh, so that was that. It was kind of funny uh, in that respect. There was uh, the people who are kind of funny. I guess carrying the film would be like the scrolls. You know, like, you're my scientist. You know, why didn't you think about that? And the guy's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was some good. I mean, there was, uh, there were definitely attempts to lighten the mood because as you go, like, she falls into the blockbuster. Right. And then he calls her, like, blockbuster girl. And it's just, uh, it's funny. It's like, oh, okay. Now we know what year we're in. Right. You know, 1995, because that's the only time that blockbuster would have been big. Right. I think that's, uh, I think in 94, collecting my first comic book. Mm. Uh, so around that time. Um, this is what brought me into comic books. This is a wizard pricing guide for comic books. So it, it tells you all kinds of stuff about comic books coming out. Yeah. And at the end, you get a pricing guide. It says, you know, number one for, uh, say, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, $12,000. Mm. All right. As I'm going through this, I'm thinking... Wow. So if you just buy a comic book and hold on to it for like 40 years, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So I think my, my interest in getting comic book aside from the air was like, I can make a lot of money. I think it developed my, um, 
what do you call your Bitcoin it? acumen? My, my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my low time preference of uh, not opening some comic books. I have yeah. X-Men toys I never opened. Uh, and just holding up for the future and have like little journals in fifth grade saying, I'm going to get rich from my comic books. Yeah. Uh, one day I'll sell comic books and buy three states and no one will live in them all. And, uh, <laughs> silly things like that. <laughs> Wizard that was a good one. Yeah. Um, so as a comic book fan and watching this, um, this wasn't really that impressive. Uh, and versus like all the other comic book movies like that come out now. Um, versus uh like when x-men first came out did you see that um yes they're, they're fighting on the statue of liberty mm-hmm. i saw that in um bolivia it's weird oh wow and uh so i was in team there watching it's like finally like they bring these characters like to life on screen like people have been waiting for this like forever was this like the tv show this is no, the or tv sh- movie yeah this is the movie oh yeah, right the right. tv show was uh generation next um or yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, was just kind of a, a crappy TV show. Yeah. They, they did, they did the best. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking, like, this is stuff that people have collected. Their, their audience would be comic book nerds, uh, fans of that na- nature. Uh, you'll find that, uh, they will know who Captain Marvel is. But of course, like, the people watching Captain Marvel today don't have any idea who this person is. All right. Um, much like, le- not like there's a hint of a carpet, but Captain Marvel. Uh, like in the uh, Galaxy um, movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, there's a, a scene for like Adam Warlock. Like there's a reveal, right? So you think like, here's a setup of an interesting character. Maybe they'll make a movie off of that. Uh, but I'm thinking like, what was the point of making a Captain Marvel movie, right? It's It's a weird, yeah. It doesn't really fit. And, and so many of these other... Marvel movies are like Thor, you know, he's an alien and he comes from this crazy background, but it just, if for whatever reason, it feels like it just makes more sense and it fits more smoothly and it's got a better developed background than this Cree, uh, you know, the introduction of like, they just jump right in All in right. the movie. They just jump right into Cree and you're just like kind of supposed to know what like the yeah. society is all about. Like you're supposed to like identify <laughs> with some alien beings, right? Um, at least with the Asgardians with Thor, these are like our culture myths, right? So we can still kind of identify with that. There's still like connection with that. Right. Um, and Galaxy Quest, uh, uh, not Galaxy Quest, Guardians of the Galaxy. Good movie. Good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Allen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Chris Pat, a uh, human, you can still identify with these people, right? There's still a connection with that. Um, I think they try to make a connection with this by showing that these people still kind of look human, the mm-hmm. Kree, uh, at least uh, Carol Danvers and some of the other people there. Not everybody was blue, not even Jude Law, right? Weird. Right. Um, but it seems like something that uh, comes up at the very last minute, especially now with Endgame coming out, right? The, the last Avenger movie coming out, you could say. Uh, and where all these other superheroes have built up their their character and their, their arc, their their, their storyline over many years. And now you have uh, a random superhero coming out of nowhere. Uh, it makes it seem like she might be the person to do like this ultra feminist movement and save the day in the end and just like, you know, like Thanos off as his uh, throne or something like that. Put on the glove and, you know, everyone's saved. The deus ex machina of right. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. story. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was Ant-Man, right? You could say Ant-Man came out of nowhere, but he's already got two films, right? But at the same time, he doesn't come off as a uh, overly super powered and will come in and save the day, right? Right. Uh, he comes with, uh, uh, he's funny. He comes with, uh, I guess, a way of, of uh, charming people. Uh, it was a fun movie, right? This one didn't really come off as fun. It just seemed uh, just going along the plot. I guess like, here's a scene, her smirking. All right, do one liner bits of like uh, saying that you're, you know, uh, you won't be put down. Uh, this guy said, hey, uh, smile a little. Okay, next scene, still bike. You know, it just seemed uh, uh, like trying hard to give her uh, some kind of a uh, struggle or something like that. Um, she has no weaknesses. Right, she doesn't come off as having a. She's like Superman, basically. Exactly. Yeah, just like in like the movie, uh, the Justice League, when he finally comes out of B 
being dead, he just you know defeats the the gra guy. Uh, I don't know what his name is, but yeah, the guy with the horns. Effortly, at least. Right. So I can't really yeah. imagine like anything else where anyone could ever identify with Captain Marvel. They they try to establish a parallel between um, her experiences as a human, where prior where she was becoming an Air Force pilot and battling her way through childhood, you know, and oh, you know, you're a girl, you can't go fast on that go kart or whatever. And then they go into, and now she's trying to uh, defeat, you know, the the Kree or defeat this guy who's held her down, and now she's taken off her. The, her control mechanism that kept her power is limited. The patriarchy holding her back. Right. Yeah. And now she's able to, it's just a one-time thing, and she's come to this realization all at once. And so th- it's, you can definitely see what's at work there, you know. It's right. A, it's a quick, sudden um, in- moment of independence now. She's she's self-actualized. She's a strong, independent woman. Right. Um, I could say that, like the way that this movie has portrayed itself or presented or marketed as if like, this is like uh, the first of its kind, or this is a, uh, wow. Marvel movie starring a woman. Um, you know, come give us your money and watch this. We've even, uh, used Stan Lee's Twitter account to promote it. And the guy's dead. You know, I think that's kind of weird that they'll still use his Twitter account right. to promote things still in it. Right. Uh, I did like the nod for Stan Lee and the beginning credits, where instead they usually have like the Marvel comic book hero, so it's just Stanley doing all the different phases mm-hmm. of the intro. Um, yeah, I, I think he might have also recorded more scenes for other future like events. I'm pretty sure we'll see him in the end game too, right? I think oh. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know that. Well, there's the one scene in the subway where she yeah he pulls down his you know newspaper and yeah. and so they smile at each other and that's that's cute, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. It's not like uh, like the way they present itself. It's like it's not you know true, right? There's other female heroes. Wonder Woman was good up to the last part where she defeats the bad guy with the power of love. And I was like, man, all right, yeah. Um, I mean, there was that movie um, Interstellar. Have you seen that? Yeah. And there was a thing about you know what what connects us, you know, love. I was like, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. There, there's always there's just a, yeah, it's a cop out kind of a, a plot device. Right. But you, um, I mean, at least with, I felt bad when, you know, at the end of Wonder Woman, when he gets blown up in the plane, or you think he's dead. And, you know, but they, they, there's a certain thing running along all these stories that it's, it's like, uh, the, this is a hero and they have to be, they have to struggle and they have to go through difficulties. And then they come out on the other side, better able to fight this this big foe. Right. And that, to me, I I felt like the struggles that she went through weren't very difficult. Um, you Who know, hasn't fall off a bicycle. <laughs> right. Everybody falls off a bicycle. Um, everybody tells you to slow down, whether you're a boy or a girl right. or whatever. You know, and you can't. It, it, whether you're a boy or a girl, I feel like. Nobody would encourage you to join the, uh, you know, become a Air Force pilot or say that you could do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. There's that one scene where she's like being taunted by other recruits, like, "Yeah, you're not gonna make it. You're not good enough." It's like hearing that echo again, and again in the film. It's like that's just what they do to everybody. It's yeah. not just because they're a girl. That was in boot camp. They they should talk to you. everybody. Should talk to each other. The uh, boot camp instructor is going to do that. Right. Uh, that's just part of training to kind of break you down and uh, make sure you can handle that kind of stress, uh, especially if you're going to be in a plane. Right. Uh, Especially if somebody wants to kill you. Right, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. They're yelling profanities. Oh, I'm going to freeze up. Right, right. Uh, so I thought that, that was kind of weird. Um, there was a, a something she said earlier. I guess we'll go to the politics really quickly because. Right. Brie every, Larson. Everything right. seems to be political these days. Um, and you can blame the left for that. But so you have um, something she said on Twitter, which I thought was funny. That's a while ago. And she said, I merely smiled at a TSA agent. And he asked for my phone number. To live life as a woman is to live life on the defense. It's like, Jesus Christ, the first, like, like he catcalled her, right? It might have even been like asking for, like, let me see your passport, you know, let me see your, you know, that kind of information. But she kind of takes it as, well, he smiled at me. Uh, you know, this is, uh, oppressive. This is a sign of the patriarchy. Uh, this is why I'm with her and I am doing, uh, Captain Marvel. 
Um, at the same time, who smiles at TSA agents? All right. She says she smiled. All right. I merely smiled at a TSA agent. Who does that? Yeah. <laughs> I know. She's the one with the problem there. Right. <laughs> you should be mean mugging that guy. Yeah. The, um, it is, it is a, you know, flashback in the movie and, uh, the Captain Marvel is walking through TSA and somebody asks for her number. And that's one of the formative experiences that right. brought her to this point. <laughs> like, what? No, this is not the type of like difficulty you're supposed to be battling through. You're supposed to be battling through, you know, yourself. Right. It, it, more often than not, I, I always get the sense that these stories are about your weakness and battling through that as opposed to everyone else's weakness <laughs> and, and their, their problems, you know? I'm pretty sure she snuck in that part. Like, maybe she pushed for it to happen where the guy on the motorcycle comes up and says, hey, why don't you smile? And she takes that as a fence, you know, and then, you know, steals some clothes and his bike and rides off. That seems to be, like, her thing, her kind of pushing for it. There was a, a thing that she said recently, like, the whole thing kind of started off with her talking about, she says, about a year ago, I started paying attention to what my press pass, press days looked like and the critics reviewing movies. I noticed it appeared to be overwhelmingly white male. Oh, gasped. Mm. So mm. I spoke to Dr. Stacy Smith at the USC Annenberg Inclusive Initiative, who put together a study to confirm that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of comic book nerds are happen to be white people, right? Uh, <laughs> moving white forward, male. white male. <laughs> I decided to make sure that my press days were more inclusive, meaning uh, she didn't like the fact that there are white males there, right? It's like, like why are there white males here? Um, I don't like that white males are re 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 reviewing or criticizing or providing this kind of critique. Um, anytime when people talk about like diversity these days, especially from the left, this means uh, we don't want to see, we've seen enough white people. They want to see other people, right? Um, with some, by their definition standard, that'd be kind of racist, right? Because if, if it was reversed, you know, they'd call out. Uh, those people are racist. Yeah, there's too many black people. We want us to have more white people in here. It's like, yeah, that's kind of racist, <laughs> right? Um, so I would say the debacle began with that. Um, and yet there's no problem substituting Annette Benning, who actually played uh, Captain Marvel, the, ori the original Cap Marvel. You know, yeah. there, there's no issue with that. So it's... They call it whitewashing, but I guess in this case, it's like female washing the original right, character who right. was actually a male. Supposedly. Right. Um, like, what if they had a guy play Wonder Woman and you know, a Wonder Man? There is a Wonder Man out there. Right. Uh, or Cat Man instead, you know, or something like that. You know, there'd be an up uproar. Um, it would defeat the purpose of the character, right? Right. <laughs> isn't the character supposed to, yeah, isn't their lens supposed to be this this type of gender and this is how we uh you know this is how that person grows up yada 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 right there is um they only throw a fit if it's uh, a white person doing it well so like they don't they don't care if it's uh if it's black washed or asian washed or w woman washed um i was after i watched the movie i stopped by uh the abc to get some uh larceny and honey whiskey uh and i talked to this guy because i was talking with my my girlfriend and uh we're, we're debating the movie as we're going through, we're actually guys like, so here over heard what we're talking about. And I said, uh, uh, something to the effect of, um, I was talking about Nick Fury. That's what it was. Cause I grew up with the comic books and I've known, uh, Nick Fury in the comic books and Marvel and stuff like that. And he was a white guy. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 He started off in like 1960s with like, uh, Sergeant, uh, Fury and the Howling Commandos. Uh, and then eventually he moves up in rank, becomes a colonel. He's in, with S.H.I.E.L.D. He has run in with the X-Men, uh, with the Wolverine comic books, especially. Uh, and then around, I don't know when it was, like 2002. That's when I stopped collecting. Uh, when, like, they changed all the characters. That's when, like, social justice warrior stuff started seep seeping in. Um, they made him, they made him black. And so they took a character that already had a rich history. It's not like he was new to the scene. It's like, yeah, we made a mistake. Let's, let's change him up. Uh, and I think they actually did style him after, um, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson, right. And uh, yeah. so, so so they, they changed him. And people are like, well, that's okay. And, and the guy was saying, yeah, that's fine. And I said, well, what do you think? Um, uh, would you be up? So he says, yeah, that's not a problem. It's like, well, what do you think if they uh, put a white person as for a storm? And then he's like, oh, mm, you know, hesitation. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's well, uh, they perceive it as okay. Yes, but all of these characters started out white, you know, right? And so it, here or there to just change one of them into a black woman or, you know, a trans, you know, right. whatever, Indian, then it's fine because we're just doing it one, you know, one offs here and right. there. But we're not. And I, th- <clears throat> I think that's like the beginning. Just that's the beginning of the idea. You know, th- that's not the end. That's right. not the ultimate end. Right. Uh, like there's Bishop is an X-Men member. Um, he's comes from the future where Sentinels dominate, uh, days of the future past in the comic books. Awesome character. He comes back in time. It's like he likes it here with the X-Men sticks with him. He's like a cable, but he's just a black guy. Hmm. Uh, and he's got a rich history too. It's like, you know, so you have all these other characters, but like, would they be upset if they made a white guy as Bishop? You know, or like, you know, these are comic book characters anyway, so you can create new characters, right? Um, I got upset when they made uh, Colossus gay when they revamped uh, the, the whole X Men. Oh right, uh, right. And so like, what? Where did this come from? <laughs> I'm I'm collecting all the like uncanny X Men, all these other X Men her- heroes and figures, and like I had the toys and everything when I was a kid growing up, and all of a sudden like they forced their sexual orientation now. Uh, it's like if you're going to create a gay character, create a gay character, but like don't just do it just for the sake of like uh, I don't know for for diversity uh, casting of that sort. Or if it came out somehow like you know as a part of the story that is essential, like to right, his, his right. story, maybe you know if it <laughs> if it makes it more oh wow okay that explains why he was right, hanging out at those gay right. bars like he would never knock down the gay bars when he was running through buildings, you know, <laughs> you know like <laughs> right. Uh, and so for Captain Marvel. His origin story is uh, that he was a Kree who was sent to Earth to uh, uh, examine and see what kind of weapons are on here and then report back and then come in for an invasion. And then he kind of, for some reason, didn't like Earth, even though like they're always attacking him, the military especially, uh, kind of fell in love with a girl here. And uh, the girl that he kind of fell in love with would be uh, Carol Danvers. Um and so he would go in disguise like Clark Kent to be like a nerdy guy. Carol Danvers didn't like the nerdy guy, but didn't know that that was uh, Marvel. Mm. Uh, and then there'll be some kind of explosion where this machine will grant like a wish. And I guess like any wish you, you want. And I guess for her, subconsciously, she always looked up to Captain Marvel. And then and from there and identifying that machine kind of read that from her and then granted her the powers of Captain Marvel to be just like her hero role model. So it's kind of weird because in the in the movie, uh, there's a there's a scene there where it says you know you take the form of who she most admires, like when she's talking to the supreme intelligence, right, right, and it's uh, some woman uh, from her past. Uh, in the comic books, it wouldn't be that woman; it would be Marvel, and that's how she got her powers. Mm. Uh, and she'll be known as Miss uh, Marvel. For, for a long time. Uh, it wasn't until recently. So, like, this whole thing, like, well, yeah, you know, she did become Captain Marvel. Like, yeah, that was, like, it's a few years ago. That wasn't, like, that's, that wasn't, like, when I collected comic books or, like, the decades before that. Uh, she was created as a, as a means to... Like an offshoot of yeah. this other character. Yeah and, yeah. and to, like, counter Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman came out and, like, Marvel's like, well, we don't have <laughs> yeah. a strong woman like that. So, let's create... Uh, her, Miss Miss Marvel. Uh, so like riding on the waves of feminism. Uh, so I would say like historically, she's just always been like a background character until recently. Um, and maybe if they're gonna tie in maybe the the X Men into it, yeah. Uh, because now they're involving the the Kree and the Scrolls. That ties in like the the Phoenix because the Phoenix has a lot of run-ins with these kinds of people. And uh, and if they do that, that'd be awesome. But if they do that, maybe we might get some comeuppance in this because Rogue gets her powers from uh, Miss Marvel. Mm. So in the comic books, she's with Mystique. Mystique, they're like going to a base and they're invading. And she tells um, Rogue in the comic books, like, you're not really up to this kind of mission. Maybe you should stay back. Uh, they even did a scene in animated X-Men in the cartoons. So she, she, so Rogue thinks she's up for the mission. She goes out there and she can counter Smith Marvel and she takes off her gloves and you know how she can absorb powers and she right. kind of grabs onto her and just doesn't let go and holds on to the point where she knocks her out into a coma. So Miss mm. Marvel in the comic books was out in a coma for a long time. Uh, and that's how Rogue gets the power of flying around and having super strength. 
Now, I got the impression that, so Nick Fury gets has this ability to communicate with her mm-hmm. through this, like, walkie-talkie that she gives him, basically. Yeah. And uh, the, so, so I read somewhere that quite possibly they, they try to allude to the fact that it takes Nick Fury such a long time to contact her. Um, yeah, which may, may be significant in uh, the Avengers. So that she, when she appears in the Avengers, oh, well, it's because it took him a long time to. Not because she's in a coma. Him. She was right. out in the right. space fighting. Mm. But like, there's other. So don't contact me unless it's an emergency, right? But I think that scene when Loki is invading the Earth and they have freaking like a hole in space and you got all this kind of spaceships coming in out of nowhere and you're just wrecking havoc in New York City. Mm-hmm. At some point, like maybe this team is, isn't cut out for this. Like, let me press that button now just in case, right? Yeah. Because um, I do, isn't there something about like dropping a nuclear bomb or Iron Man makes a bomb and shoots it back off in space or something like that? Mm. There's like a scene yeah. where Iron Man uh, holds onto a bomb and goes into the wormhole to drop it off into the armada. And it looks like he's about to die as he's falling back. But he falls back to the wormhole. Um, and then they, that's how they defeat Loki and his armada. Um, hmm. But when you have like like that kind of world devastation sort of thing, it's like, or like uh, Ultron coming in and you're like picking up a huge, a whole city in the sky. It's like, yeah, <laughs> call her in for a second, just in case, right? You know, right, right. <laughs> just to see if this button works, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it well, uh, you know, I always get the impression with with these group Avenger ideas, all these different powers. Like I always think back to Power Rangers, and they all do something different, and they're supposed to be complementary and work together in order to be better as a group. But when you introduce somebody this powerful, it almost seems like, um, okay, well, our failsafe, we were going to do this little dance, right? You know, but we didn't need to because we had this, you know. Big bully right. in the back pocket. Right. <laughs> Quick silver wouldn't have died. Um, you wouldn't have like all this, uh, recklessness that I've gone on in trying to stop these, uh, overpowered, uh, villains. Right. Um, and if you see, like, I guess in the trailer and the, and the ending critics where like they put the device in there, it's like, how long do you think that would have been? Like maybe a day or two when they got the device from the car where Nick Fury, uh, dissipated. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to figure out who is sending the signal out to. So two days, right? It's like, all right, I think she could come out for two days, uh, smash some shit up. It's like, all right, I got to go, <laughs> right? It's not like uh, I was like, man, I, you know, I was having a good time out there. It's like, you know, it's like, all right, you know, this is her home planet, right? <laughs> right? right. It's not like an alien world. She has memories here. So her 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 friend uh, friends live here. So it's not like it's like she'll come out of here. It's like, like don't trouble me again, you know? Right. Um, so I, thought, I think that was just a weird way of them trying to patch up why she was never really included or uh, weak writing, I would say. There's I, not enough powerful uh, women in this group, right? Is right. that the criticism are, of it? <laughs> I mean, who, who are the other women in Avengers? It's I like, mean, you have uh, Scarlet Witch. Why didn't you give her a movie? Right? She's She is powerful. Yeah. Uh, in the comic books, like, she wields tremendous power. Like, she has, like cosmic changing abilities of like changing reality she's a reality warper in the comic books so and she's a um, daughter of magneto uh as quicksilver as the son of magneto and she has the ability to like 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 a magic just change anything she wants in a reality there's so, like in the comic book series uh, after i stopped collecting but every once in a while i'll keep tabs yeah uh, there's a series called house of m where she was upset of uh i guess being attacked um, I'm not quite sure exactly what the drama was leading up to it, but she softly whispered, no more mutants. And then, like, just like that, like, they in a snap. The entire world changed. And, like, there's only, like, 100 mutants left. All the mutants in the world disappeared, <laughs> and the reality changed everything. Uh, so she's tremendously powerful. Like, there's that scene in uh, Black Panther, in that movie, where she comes out of nowhere and, like, takes these machines and, like, wrecks havoc, but Wow. Yikes. So, so she has, I would say, uh, Captain Marvel level kind of powers. So why not make a movie for her? Or Black Widow. Right. Maybe it's the same problem. I, I guess, you know, too powerful. You but, know. but they would deserve their own movie, right? Like mm-hmm. we, we've been along the ride with them, right? Uh, we've been uh, with these people for like, what, a decade now, right? Right. Uh, with, with these characters. Black Widow making her introduction and I think uh, Iron Man. Um 
and it's weird. I think she has like a liaison with maybe Tony Stark or Captain America, and then eventually Bruce Banner. Right. As he gets around. As uh, they as they introduce these characters, though, I guess they're adding to. So like, there if if you have a Scarlet Witch character, you know, in the in the uh, comic books. You might not, like, from their vantage point, they're probably like, okay, well, in this movie universe, she doesn't exist. Because otherwise, yeah, she's always in the background, just like she could just wish away Ultron if she feels like it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's the, you know, the, the atheists will argue about the uh, problem of evil. And right. they'll talk about God and say, well, why doesn't God, you know, step in sometimes when it's clearly a case where, you know, it, it would help a lot of people. And so that's that's the problem with some of these characters. Right. Is why don't they just step in if it would be so easy for them? Yeah. Right. They didn't nerf her powers a bit. Um, but you have, like, um, that machine guy with the gemstone in his head. He's kind of powerful, too. Um, but, for uh, again, I think this character came out of nowhere, left field. I think it's just to be more promotion of, like, hey, DC did uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, we need to have our own kind of superpower person as well um and they don't view like of course like black widow to be on par with wonder woman uh, and they don't view scarlet witch and her powers are nerfed to also be on par with wonder woman so they have to do uh, a different thing and another level uh and in a way to kind of promote uh feminism from what i've seen right a mary sue character uh so that i don't appreciate right because she's going to be involved <laughs> it's just like uh unearned stripes you know unearned cred uh joining yeah. the team out of nowhere uh, and she's probably going to have an impact. Again, it's going to be really disappointing. It's going to ruin it, I guess I would say, for her to like uh, to be the one who defeats uh, Thanos. But right. th- this isn't like the first time they've really done this. I mean, you mentioned uh, Colossus becoming gay. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it seems like this movement is so insidious. Throughout every aspect of the culture, we have to now confront, well, no, this is the, this is the new norm, you know. Right. This, this person is diverse. Right. <laughs> in the movies uh colson sort of remained dead because <laughs> he uh, it's interesting he makes a flashback appearance in it but in the avengers it was a pivotal scene that he died right it inspired him to kind of fight loki and uh to team up to be the team finally and then you see him in shield uh on the netflix tv show or something like that and he's you know i guess one of those comic tropes where you can never really kill a character but it's just supposed to be depicted as like if comic book characters were real, if they were in the real world, uh, how would it be portrayed? Like they wouldn't wear uh, yellow underwear or spandex suits, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they give them an actual leather suit and stuff like that. Yeah, um, people will people do die. Uh, I think that's something that uh, Game of Thrones throws in really well. Like, yeah, real situation, real war, um, casualties are real. I thought Punisher was good. The more the yeah Netflix version of that yeah. Because he's just like a dude. Anybody, virtually anybody, could do what he's doing. Right. And it's uh, it was done well. It's a very difficult character to do well too. Right. It was good to see that the the actor uh to do it do that really well. Because yeah. I remember him in uh that zombie TV show, the uh, Walking the Boring Dead. Dead. Yeah, The Walking Dead. Boring yeah. Dead. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely getting boring. Yes. Uh, I had I lost it after like the second season when they're still stuck in the farm. It's like, what are you guys doing? This whole season just takes place on a farm. It's like, it's not going anywhere. They had to, yeah, they had to get rid of him. Right. Shane. Yes. <laughs> Shane. Yeah, that's right. Um, so pros, you know, there were, the CGI was, was really well done. Uh, they made him, uh, Nick Fury, Samuel Jackson look like unnoticeably like unaffected by computer graphics. Mm-hmm. Right. I thought that was really well. I think, um, that's the kind of CGI you want to see, right? Like they use it in Star Wars sometimes, and like you can tell, like these are characters, and like they're talking in the green screen, like there's nobody there. Yeah. Um, but I guess in the way like they kind of affected them, it's like that's that's really well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess that's to be expected now, right? It's 2019. Yeah. Right. It's incredible. I mean, well, they you know they can do deep fakes pretty easily, so I imagine a yeah movie could could come up with yeah. right. So, um, pros uh, the scene where they told Bray. Uh, Captain Marvel, that she wasn't, uh, she wasn't good enough. Yeah, that was that was correct. I don't think she was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it. I guess the there are you know characters probably. I mean, herself, that actress 
Brie Larson. You you could imagine maybe a character who could have done it a little better. I mean, I like the uh, lady who did Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, you know, she, she did good. She did good. She seemed to fit that character a little bit better. Um, right. But... Again, I felt rushed. I felt like uh, just pushing in a, an agenda, which uh, was... Well, this is owned by D- Disney, right? Marvel? Um, I... I think so. I yeah, know Star Wars is owned by Disney. Star Wars yeah. is owned by Disney, and you know you see the agenda that's being pushed in Star Wars in the last few movies. Um, my complaints, yeah, it's sort of been a Black Widow film. Uh, she's a Mary Sue, has no weaknesses. Uh, never she's in trouble. She just gotta shoot her photons, you know. <laughs> right. Um, even when she was, she didn't even have her full powers. She was still, you know, overrated. Uh, there's like still no sense of um. I don't know, even, even like the fight scenes that she had, it's like it wasn't really anything remarkable. Uh, oh, in 2009, the Walt Disney Company acquired Mar- Marvel Entertainment. There you go. So, yeah, yeah it's true. I mean, Mar- they're, Disney's doing the same thing to Star Wars, and um, they're doing it. They're doing it so that they can push this uh, agenda onto. It's almost like the GamerGate issue, where there's this whole subset of nerds who are nerdy white guys who are not exposed to the rest of the culture. And so they're like, nope, you too have to be <laughs> exposed right. to this now. <laughs> uh, it's like um, like that purple-haired lady in Star Wars, the commander that came yeah. out of nowhere, right? Trying to establish she has a rep- repertoire with, um, with the other people, with Leia. Uh, or like that scene where um, Leia, uh, when Han Solo died, like her husband... Here comes Chewbacca coming out of the plane. He, he just landed, and you know he's walking. He walks right by her. Leia walks right by him. Doesn't say anything. You think like Chewbacca would be the first person that she embraces, right? Hey, yeah. I mean, I always make fun of you, but you know, it was my husband. That was her best friend. Instead, she kind of points right to um, hmm. what's her name, uh, Ray, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, like as if she's that's the first time she's met her. As if like she knows her. And as like, it seems like more like a sisterhood, a feminist thing. Like, you know, you're a woman. I'm a woman. Things are hard times. Hug, embrace, Chewbacca, <laughs> walk by. <laughs> okay, we're running along now. Right. <laughs> get you something to eat, buddy. <laughs> you get some kibble for you, buddy. Right, right. So it just seems you could see the direction is like where some of this feminism stuff is kind of pushed. Uh, and I always find it to be, I don't know, I guess at what point like you would say, like, when do you quit? Like, yeah, that, that's a fair question. I mean, people love these movies, and yeah. they, they love what they were, I guess, because they didn't start out this way. And right. uh, you know, and then they love what, yeah, okay, there's a new one out. And at what point, yeah, are you going to walk into the theater, and it's just going to be a long like lecture about you know women's liberation and right. uh, feminist ideology? Like, that's eventually going to happen. Are they going to play this movie in uh, Saudi Arabia? <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, you know, women can drive and fly planes. Uh, and there's like, yeah, women uh, can't do much of that much either in most places in the Middle East, right? Uh, they can't go out in public without there being a male guide. Uh, they can't, uh, there's no lack of representation, much less elsewhere. Uh, I think it's what, if you're an accused or, or if you're accusing someone of rape, you have to have uh, someone, uh, like two male witnesses and someone on your side. Uh, there's a lot of, if we would say, if there's a need for feminism, right? And the way they kind of go out and saying like they're so oppressed, that's where you should go. That's mm-hmm. where Captain Feminism. So try to go <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and liberate, right? Right. Here, yeah. it's uh, uh, the most you'll get is, uh, hey, smile. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What's your problem, babe? <laughs> go get me a sandwich. <laughs> and then she says no. And then that's it. And that's it. It's like, all right. Oh, wow. You're so oppressed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, I thought the, the interactions between like Wonder Woman and the guy in that movie were much more real. Like they obviously have a chemistry and they're interested in each other, but it's not, there, it's not like I'm a woman and you got to play by my rules. Right. And this is my, you know, and it, it wasn't like, even though that little society that she comes from is, the Amazons, like they're woman ruled and all that, right? So and she doesn't. I didn't think they played into the feminism stuff at all in the Wonder Woman. No, I think that's kind of why I enjoyed it, except for the ending part. But um, there wasn't like no little ploy of like 
men being stronger or, or her like feeling offended or oppressed by anything. Um, and in a way, this kind of mirrors Wonder Woman because she's trying to do this whole thing of like uh, new mind, new memory, who does, right? <laughs> uh, I have amnesia. It's like I'm kind of tired of that kind of trope. But it kind of works maybe in movies where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, in some movies, well, I would say Wolverine started it because he's had amnesia in the comic books for a long time being experimented on and doesn't know like who he is in the background. And that's been like his struggle like for decades in the comic books. Um, but then you see a lot of that now in movies and trying to like, trying to be human, right? And she's already had six years living as a crew warrior. Uh, you would think that uh, her coming to Earth to be... I don't know. She wouldn't feel offended maybe by a guy saying, hey, smile or something. If this is a whole new planet, you don't know what kind of uh, stuff that they, they do around here, right? They're trying to blend in. You're trying to um, know what the culture's like. Uh, you're not trying to offend people. You're not trying to steal their stuff, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, at the end, she uh, so when she punches, uh, what's his face? Who's that character, that guy? Uh, uh, the Cree character. Jude, Jude Law. Jude Law, yeah. right. And so she's like, I don't need to prove anything to you anymore because I'm really powerful. And uh, it it just, uh, it's like, yeah. Um, and you didn't the rest of the time either. Right. Yeah, and there was no, if you have confidence, like it seems like male or female, like you don't, you don't need to play this game of right. feminism. And, right. And you didn't see, he did not see that in, in Wonder Woman and any of her interactions with uh, men. Uh and you have also, like, they played up like she's like the first, like, I and mean, of course there's Wonder Woman, but they played up like, she, like, this is like a very important film, you know, because it's starring a woman. And it's like, well, there's, there's other films that start also a woman. <laughs> and it didn't center around the fact that, uh, she didn't have a meat popsicle between her legs. <laughs> and places of that you find in, uh, Alien with, uh, Sigourney Weaver. And she's played a, yeah. a strong role throughout the series. Like, she just only gets more badass. But it wasn't like, um, in the picture, the picture, it still centers around like the alien, right? Or, or the mystery of space and, and that monster. It's not about Ripley because I'm badass or something right. like that, right? Uh, and her struggles with the patriarchy. Um, it's just, uh, her way of being a survivalist in, that, in those situations. And that kind of environment is shaping her. Uh, and those are like her trials or right, in tribulations. In like Michonne in Walking Dead, uh, the lady with the swords yeah. or, or the sword. And, you know, it's like she in the story, they present her and it makes sense, you know. And it, I mean, obviously, at the end of the world with a zombie apocalypse, it's easy to just uh, it, it's easy to just. All right, who who's going to be existing? Who's going to be living? And right. you know, it's this lady who had the sword. And but she, you know, they establish it and it works. And. Uh, she's and over the course of the show, she becomes like a a strong character, and, right? And and you just it, it's not by accident, or it's not like well, this is this is uh just a, a narrative being pushed. She's like she she presents like that, you know. Her introduction in that show was really badass, and when she had the zombie slaves, and when she like tore out the jaw the jaws of them, and she had them like on a leash, yeah, and like that's her way of like maybe evading other other zombies. Um, it's like a camouflage or something like that. Right. Um, and that would be a good choice of weapon, a katana, right? You don't have, you don't run out of rounds, right? right. And then after. It doesn't make noise, yeah. Yeah. And after a year or so, like the bodies of the walking, boring dead people would be kind of mushy, right? More easily to be cut down. Right. 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 Uh, I think that's something that, uh, would be a problem in that series in the long run. Like, you know, they'll just outlive them because, uh, a couple of years will go by and, They'll just be like walking, you yeah. know, mulch. Mush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won't even be able to move anymore. I mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're in, uh, Antarctica or something. That's like the problem zone. You build a wall there, <laughs> <laughs> but then they just freeze, right? right. <laughs> yeah. It, you, you just go through the, uh, the, the list of characters and it's like, this is not something that needs to be forced. I mean, right. I remember Thomas Sowell saying something interesting about, Oh, uh, Barack Obama, when people were talking about, well, if you're black, you have to vote for him because he's going to be the first black president. And right. Thomas Sowell just said, there's going to be a black president. You don't have to vote for this guy just because, uh, you know, he, he's black. I mean, it'll eventually happen, but the, the way to go about it is not to, uh, vote for the wrong guy. 
you know. That's one like Hillary was saying, like why uh, her like reason why she didn't become president, and she was blaming it on uh, on the husbands of um, uh, forcing their wives or betraying <sighs> themselves uh, and not voting for her, right? Not because of uh, her killing people <laughs> off screen or <laughs> or. or um, Stealing the DNC from Bernie Sanders and uh, a lot of other shenanigans in which, like, she felt like she was going to be president because she's a woman, and I feel like it's time because she's a woman. There has to be a woman president. It was her just, turn. Yeah, it was her turn. She was just resting her entire campaign on that, uh, like that post she made, like you know, happy birthday to this future president. A picture of her when she's like I don't know, seven years old, uh, and trying to make it seem like this is history in the making. It's just like, uh, and it just so happens that she's the one who gets to make the history and not somebody else, right. not another woman. Right, right, right. And yeah, it's always the, it's always the narrative. I mean, it, it, they, they build it along. Okay. I'm black. I'm going to be the first black president. Oh yeah. And by the way, I get to be the one holding the power too. Right. And it's like, well, wait a sec. <laughs> they just wanted to have a, you know, somebody in their group be, become, you know, um, uh, a person of importance. So. Right. <laughs> There's um, Sarah Connor from Terminator. Yeah. Awesome woman. Uh, trains, shoots guns, uh, independent. Uh, and the next movie, Judgment Day, you know, she's been training all her life, right? Yeah. She's she's good to go, right? And that's not something uh, that she says in any way of um, feeling oppressed by men. That's just uh, her survivalist instinct in this kind of world. And right. And a world gets kind of dominated by politics and everything's kind of made political. Uh, I think that's, that's, that is good. That is a good kind of thing. Like Captain Marvel doesn't use guns, right? It's just the power of uh, just being infused with uh, a fusion reactor exploding in her face. Right? Right. Nothing about like training uh, to do this stuff. I'm, I think in um, flying a pilot, you're not really training in combat or anything like that. You have some seer training. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like she said, you know, hey, when the... Jude Law character came in. She said the pararescue people are going to come in here. Those are the people who have combat training and they fly in uh, in the Air Force. So I guess he does have training being a crew soldier, but you find uh, someone like Sarah Connor uh, training her whole life and being kind of pro-gun, you can yeah. say in that sense, uh, a, a real role model for women. And she had to work. There's a lot of work that goes in there. Right. I think it with, yeah, with her character, there's, you know, as soon as she, in what, like 84, she uh, meets this guy, or 87, she meets this guy, and he tells her the story. From then on, she, like, takes the ball and runs with it. And then, yeah, with with this character, I mean, there's with, always with a superhero, there's always going to be a certain amount of, like, whoa, okay, you got bit by a spider, and that's right. that's it. But it's there's at least got to be a narrative there where there's work and there was effort, and they, they had a lot of uh, inexperience, maybe. Right. And they didn't know how to deal with their power. Figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. For her, it was like, who? Oh, I'm just too powerful. She's falling, <laughs> and all of a sudden, now she knows how to fly. Right. right? She's, she was falling, and all of a sudden, <laughs> turn on the jets. Close my eyes, channel some feminism. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a disappointing, like. To live life as a woman is to live life on defense. Yeah. When you learn to fly, you know, you don't typically, you fall a couple times. Right. Right. Even Spider Man can't, like, Grab onto there the was wall, this, right? There was the scene where he was trying to figure out how to jump and do that stuff, and he's like crashing into buildings all the time, uh, signs on top of buildings, and like it's still hilarious. But you see, like he's taking the time to figure out his powers. Right. It wasn't like doing Iron Spider Man and like doing all this acrobatic stuff, punching people through the atmosphere as he does in the comic books. Um, but yeah, I think that's. And she shoots photon beams, right? Yeah. Which either, I mean, either annihilates somebody or uh, doesn't do anything. Right. It seems like it does either one. Like I, w- I would wonder about. Uh, I would just assume that it would just vaporize a person, but apparently they can get right back up and be like, "Oh, that hurt." Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you need some more fake struggle, right? I mean, she's in, these people are are threatening to kill her and her new friends. Do so you think like, "Boop, done," right? Like, like Jude Law had no problem with that. You know, with that scroll pretending that he was her. It's like, all right, done, right? But. I guess uh, for her, I think it's kind of ridiculous. Like, you know, these people are threatening your friends, threatening to destroy the earth. It's like, all right, I'm just going to send you back in the ship and kind of, you know, send a, a, a message. And there's yeah. an additional little message there with the scroll because they are a refugee people who are being invaded by the the Cree people. 
So in that sense, that might have been one of the pros. I mean, that I, I thought was at least a halfway decent narrative, which is uh, opposing this imperial group that's, you know, moving in on. And at least at first, the impression you have of the Kree is that they're the good guys. They're the good of all Kree or whatever. And then you can turn it on its head and say, oh, no, you have this re- this revelation that they're not the good guys. And the guys that you thought were the bad guys, the green demon looking dudes, are actually uh, victims, you know. Right. In the comic books, uh, it's actually the the scrolls that are like the bad guys, and they come to Earth and they fuck things up. And, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they completely change. Yeah, the they, story. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. So, the, so the Kree are warrior race, and the scrolls shape shifting, and there's like super scrolls, like big bad. It's like when she opened the door and there's a big one, she tr- punched him, and like nothing happened. Yeah, uh, and those are like hard people to kill, and they sometimes come to Earth, and they can also mimic the superpowers of mutants, uh, and they become a problem on Earth in the comic books and just wrecking havoc. Hmm. Um, so yeah, they reversed the two roles of like who's the villain or bad guy in that kind of relationship. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of weird. Like they're talking about border planets, like they're trying to talk, bring in some kind of you know, more political stuff here. Uh, so I think that's kind of hilarious. I wish I had uh, some notes or other interesting stuff I could bring up, but in terms of border stuff, but that'll be a good topic for another time. Cause you find like most of the crime that's committed along the border are done by, uh, uh Mexican immigrants. Right along the border, most majority, a lot of the federal crimes in those areas are done by them. You find a lot of, uh, when you add it up, it's just it's not a, I guess people are not interested in being a part of the culture or adopting the culture. But this movie doesn't really go too far. It just kind of introduces it. You know, maybe in a way, since uh, the left is trying to be open borders and trying to look at these uh, people as like refugees and this is a border issue, maybe kind of anti-Trump, trying to kind of push more subliminal, unconscious, uh, more leftist meshes going in there. Yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, I mean, there's always the victim class, you know, who are just, but uh, it, there's, there's um, a power. And, you know, I just wonder about like, why doesn't somebody come out with a different uh, story that makes, makes turns this you know on its head i guess marvel's got so much money they make so much money from these that maybe it's difficult for somebody else to enter the enter the space and kind of say yeah here's my idea of how to change this well if you know um you abolish ip anyone can make uh movies there you go and i think there was a problem with that with some kind of uh, star trek fan-made film recently Hmm. or maybe it was a star wars one uh, and the Disney representative for Star Trek uh, shut it down, uh, and it was really well received. And then, I guess because of the outcry, they allowed to put it back up again. But I don't know, I think it was a Star Wars one. Um, but again, you find like uh, the Monty Python had a big problem just like shutting down uh, bootleg copies, like appearing on YouTube, and they spent a long time doing that. And then they just released their own video on YouTube and stopped doing that. And they made out like over a thousand more times in profit. Um, hmm. But I think the reason why we don't see other rich, diverse movies is because copyrights, you know. It's kind of like that, uh, the first Fantastic Four movie that came out uh, decades ago. They never told the actors that we're just doing this just to keep the license. Because if you're going to buy the license, the copyright, you have to do something with it. Or otherwise it expires and so you mm-hmm. can't renew it. And if you don't do anything with it, you you seed it up. You, you let go of it. So... They made a fake movie and they hired these actors thinking that this, that they're going to throw CGI effects and all this sort of stuff. Like, and like they're thinking, like, okay, we're just CGI everything, <laughs> uh, throw effects, everything. You have like, uh, Mr. Fantastic outstretching his arm and it looks retarded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, cause yeah. they thought that this was going to be like all the money was going to put in and make yeah. the first, uh, one of the, like, aside from Captain America. Uh, the original Punisher movie was good too, but they thought they were going to make like the first Fantastic Four awesome movie and they never released it in theaters. Yeah. Um, but it's released now. You can find it now on YouTube. Somebody, you know, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the worst movie ever. Um, but you find, I think because of IP, you can't find all these other awesome kind of, uh, comic book adaption movies. Right. I mean, it would be, I'm sure it, it would help each movie if uh there was sort of a back there there was a little competition so if 
for example, if you wanted to have a Captain Marvel, you might be hesitant to make a SJW Captain Marvel right. if you knew that someone was going to come out a year or two later with act- one that really fits the comic book story and tells the story a lot better and right. it's more true to the initial what themes. Because, I mean, with a book, you know, I could I could do the same thing. I mean, I could just take this. I mean, maybe not. I mean, I don't know the entire issue, but with co- copyrights. But I would think you could just uh, create a very similar story. But it almost seems like in order to use that character, you know, per se, you right. would have to. I mean, again, you're using your own paper, right? To mm-hmm. kind of write, so there's nothing wrong with copying. Right. Uh, the Fallout, aside from that recent game that came out, that just wasn't that great. Uh, they have uh, they have appreciation for fan made Fallout films on YouTube. Mm. They're really good, like Nuka Cola Productions. Uh, people who love the series and they just make their own kind of movies and videos and based on the Fallout game. And I think that's awesome. It's a lot. Yeah. Of, I think that's encourages more people to go into it. And that's kind of the fan base you kind of want to build. Um, but I have no interest in seeing a, <laughs> a fan base made of Captain Captain Marvel. Yeah, uh, Miss yeah. Marvel. Uh, but we'll see, I guess, how what the rest of the MCU or the end game is going to look like. And that only comes out in a few months, right? August, I think, or something. Oh, really? Yeah, it comes out this I'll, year. I'll have to watch all the other ones before I watch that. <laughs> no, I've only seen like two of those. It seems like they're coming out with a new one every month. Right. And I, I just can't keep up. So I'll just have to, you know, check. I like to wait till these movies. This is like the first movie I went out and saw in the theater because I was like, I never, I never go out. See movies. I right. always wait till they come on TV, <laughs> and it's like three dollars to rent, and that's it. Yeah. Right. Um, so we'll see if this movie is a flop. I mean, I, I think I remember them seeing like the projection was going to be one hundred eighty thousand a couple weeks ago, and they dropped it down. I was like, oh, it's going to make a hundred hundred million. I mean, not one hundred eighty thousand, one hundred eighty million. Yeah. So like they're kind of lowering their expectations on it. Uh, kind of like in a way of her saying, uh, Marvel wanting to make a you know we we can mess up our formula this is the marvel formula and her saying yeah. hold my pussy hat and <laughs> the new york times captain marvel has the year's best opening weekend at the box office well it's march 10th so. right <laughs> she's uh she's she's been seen at movie theaters uh behind the counter selling popcorn to people and trying to promote it that way mm. it's like oh captain marvel here to sell you tickets and serve you popcorn it's like <laughs> yeah they're trying really hard yeah it's um yeah, I, I don't think it will do as well as Black Panther or any of those others, but um, I don't know, time will tell. I don't think you're going to convince young girls to get into, you know, comic books and Marvel figures and all that stuff. And right. and and Ray from Star Wars, I don't think it's going to be a large, broad trend. I mean, this kind of push for equality is kind of weird, like a hardcore push and this sort of thing. It's saying like uh, equal to men, you know, it says uh, biologically they're not. And men are not equal to each other in a lot of different areas. Oh, yeah. Some men are stronger, some men are faster, some men are have different voices, stronger voices for singing, or who, who knows. But biologically, there was this shock soccer team, I think by the, the U.S. team, that were competing against like 15-year-old boys. And it's like, it's a skirmish, just a fun thing. The boys beat them, uh, like five to three or something like that. They were that. playing in the United States, though. I mean, so. yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit. <laughs> or you have uh, that rapper from uh, Britain who... Just casually beat the world record for and, and weightlifting in different uh, divisions. He's a recreational lifter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know, today I identify as a woman. And I'm just going to do this right now. Done. One. Done. Next. One. One. And then next day is like, right, I'm a male now, right? <laughs> uh, so I think it's projects somewhere stuff that shouldn't be, you know. But that's just politics. Uh, there's other places you can be equal. I mean, again, there are strong woman roles, and so you see them in. Uh, alien or Terminator, but they're not like forced there. You know, it's because of the circumstances that they're in, and that's nothing to do with like men holding them back or anything like that. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's um, there's times when it makes sense, and then there's times when you're clearly being lectured, and right. we're going to at some point we're going to get to that point where it's not. There's no more. Either we're being lectured every movie, or people have decided it's over, and we're not gonna. We're not going to go see those movies anymore. It's the dollars that I'll tell, right? And the Star Wars uh, saga recently are starting to lose money. So, mm. And the comic books, too. They started losing a lot of money when they started injecting this social justice warrior infection in, in there. 
and like these nobody really wanted to read those kind of comic books and they felt it in their wallets what do you think about comic books um do you, would that ever turn into an ipad thing or would that defeat the purpose of comic books people like the the collection of it you can't really collect like pdfs right right i think the whole thing about being a comic book collector or someone who reads comic books like you're actually like that's that's, that's physical thing it's like maybe you can interactively create with some toys on minecraft but people like the action figures and there's just something virtually different from like holding a book than um on your notepad this is not the same yeah uh so i don't think that'll ever have the same effect maybe newspapers uh because the news changes like every single day so like the, the paper you have today is just, is obsolete already right and it has no value comic books hold value uh toys hold value and i don't think that uh that's the reason like why, why they're mm-hmm. losing or anything like that interesting but i stopped because uh all of a sudden it's kind of like an episode of friends where they run out of a storyline plot and everyone's fucking each other <laughs> and uh they don't know what to do with these characters anymore right right i mean that is that is a common theme you you really love the office back before jim and pam get together right and then, <laughs> and once they're together it's like okay well the raison d'etre for this show is over now right so. <laughs> Yeah. So what grade would you give uh, Captain Marvel? I got really bored in the middle. Really, really <laughs> bored. So I, but I didn't leave and I was about to, I was, I was tempted. Um, but then it got, I mean, it kept my attention, but much better. And uh, there was some cool stuff that was going on. So I, I, I would say um, out of 10, I'd probably give, um, you know, two or four. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. I, Four. I would give a four to yeah. four, three and a half, four, uh, an E. But like, you know, in the fifty percent tile, not like the new. You know, well, uh, we want to make sure everyone gets A. So like, oh, if right. you have an eighty-five percent, it's an A. Like a, a real E, um, like halfway. But like a number case, yeah, a four. Mm-hmm. I started falling asleep like, kind of like fifteen minutes into it. And like, but I'm like, I'm doing a review. I need to force myself. Yeah, to, to stick with this and take some notes, right? Um, but yeah, it's not anything new or significant or something that you know. Yeah, I need to watch this movie again. It was that awesome. I, and I had just seen Doctor Strange not too long ago for the first time. On that TV. was fun. Yeah, it was it was cool. <laughs> and there think, was a there was a lead uh, female in that too. I right. mean, she was the original the the one who teaches him. Right. Right. I think they're trying like. If they had the guy Fiki guy who did uh, I don't know how to say Daitiki who did uh, Thor Ragnarok, maybe they could have done it much better. At least that had like a good theme. Like uh, like I think this movie was searching, trying really hard to find a theme they could kind of bounce on and kind of resonate with. But hmm. like they're trying to play some like old '90s music and stuff like that, and trying to trying to go in that direction. But I just kept misfiring. Yeah, it's like, why? Why am I listening to Courtney Love at the end? Or, yeah, like a little Nirvana, come right. as you are. Or, like, well, I don't know. It just didn't seem like the 90s. Right. Or it's like, oh, goes the 90s. <laughs> Blockbuster, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so why is she going back to, I guess it's it's got to fit with the Avengers storyline. It can't be 2019 or right. she's going back. So. Right. So that's uh, Captain Feminism. I give it a five. And yeah. oh, four. Yeah. So we go both go with four. Yeah. It was a, it was a struggle, but um, well, let's hope uh, the Avengers Endgame then turns out to be decent. Please. <laughs> so with that, those listening, stay liberated, and get off my property. <laughs>